Stand for the pledge. Oh, we'll go to the big one. one. All right. I pledge I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be something. That's good. <laughs> Shields. Okay. Uh, President McNow. Here. Vice President Clements. Here. Trustee Headland. Here. Trustee Clemenson. Here. Trustee Valentine. Here. Great. Uh, moving on to the approval of the agenda. Ms. Shields. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the agenda as written. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? All right. Welcome, everybody, who might be watching via YouTube or in the future. Um, the next meeting of the Haldane Board of Education is scheduled for Tuesday, November 15th at 7 p.m. right here in this room, 211 in the high school. It's going to be a workshop meeting, and the topic is our ongoing topic, the Campus Master Plan, its next iteration. Um, it's been a pretty exciting couple of days, almost a week. Halloween gets longer and longer every year uh, here in Phillipstown. Uh, I just wanted to express my gratitude to all the families who kind of went above and beyond. I guess starting with the parade on Main Street through all the trunk or treats <laughs> that we've had over at the rec center here on campus, um, and all of the neighborhoods in town that really go above and beyond to decorate and celebrate, including Garden Street. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, not to single out the you know the big heavy hitters here in town on Parrot and Parsonage, but um, and of course I guess ending today with the Dia de los Muertos celebration here in the garden. Uh, thanks to all the parents who have uh, continued to make this probably one of the best weeks in the village. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind everybody to do is to vote. Uh, you can vote early right now. I think, let's see, I wrote down the two locations where we can vote here. The county office building uh, in Carmel, as well as, of course, the North Highlands Firehouse uh, 9 to 5 from Wednesday, November 2nd through Sunday, November 6th, but not on November 7th. And then, of course, on November 8th at your local polling station. Um, that's all I have to say, Dr. Benante. Thank you, Sean, and welcome, everyone. I would note that we had our Halloween parade here for students, for our elementary age students yesterday afternoon, and it was a uh, well-attended and well-celebrated uh, event on campus yesterday. And again, I hope everyone had a safe evening last night. Uh, as Sean mentioned, we uh, had the EDI committee uh, uh, put on a recognition of Dia de los Muertos uh, this afternoon in the garden, very well attended. Uh, imagine hundreds of kids passing through there at some point uh, this afternoon. Uh, thank you to the organizers for that event. And I know, I think it was a great representation of EDI's efforts to cultivate uh, such events that develop, uh, help our students cultivate more of an appreciation for the diversity within our community. I think that's a great example of that. Uh, it's been a great week in uh, Haldane Athletics. Uh, both our boys and girls soccer teams won their respective section championships this mm -hmm. past weekend uh, and are scheduled to play uh, this week. So our boys will play tomorrow uh, against Rhinebeck. That should be a great game uh, tomorrow evening, 730 uh, at Hen Hud. And our girls are scheduled to play. Uh, they have a bye in the first round of regionals. So they're playing Saturday at uh, Newburgh Free Academy. And it looks like that they will match up against Millbrook High School. Uh, and that's Saturday morning at uh, NFA. So good luck to both of those teams. And our track teams are also competing this weekend at Bowden Park uh, as well. I was talking to Coach Richter a little bit yesterday about uh, their teams and some, some of the strategy uh, that goes into um, team running at an event, which I wasn't aware of. So uh, good luck to all of our student athletes this weekend. And, uh, certainly hoping for continued success on the athletic fields. Uh, that concludes my remarks. At this oh, point. Great. All right, moving on to communication from the public. The Haldane Board of Education desires and values input from the entire school community. This first public comment session is reserved for comments on any special presentations or active agenda items. For those who wish to address the board, please sign in, state your name for the record. Please keep your remarks to three minutes or less. Disparaging remarks and discussion of district personnel are strongly, uh, I don't know, now we still have the old language discouraged. here, discouraged, I suppose. Discouraged, although we do not engage in dialogue, we are listening. 
please leave your contact information with the district clerk, Megan Shields, for a prompt follow-up from the board president or the superintendent. It doesn't appear we have anyone signed up. So moving on to uh, our information reports. These are copies of the financial reports, appropriation status report, et cetera, for review uh, and to be approved at our next business meeting. Um, Moving on to consent agenda minutes. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All right. These are uh, minutes from our October 18th meeting. Is there any discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Great. All right. Moving on to committee minutes. These are technology committee minutes, policy committee, wellness committee, and the district-wide safety team. I don't know if anybody has uh, anything they'd like to share on any of those meetings. I did note in the policy committee uh, minutes that Maggie had shared a draft policy that she created after a review of the district DEI policies nearby and that you're going to have a discussion of that today. Eager to hear more about that at some point. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. No, oh, go ahead, Maggie. Oh, you, I was going to say we're going to, um, we're meeting. Um, November 21st. Thank you. We just, we just said on the November 21st to discuss it. We ran out of time. Oh, great. On the other great. Um, policies we were talking about today, but look forward to that. Great. And then later on the agenda, there's just a, a number of policies for us to review um, that, that we discussed at the last Oh, yeah, because we'll be. All right, no, nothing else. Then moving on to consent agenda financial. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? All right. Moving on to consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion here, Dr. Benante? Just wanted to make note that uh, one of the recommended items for this evening is to accept the resignation of Tim Walsh. Uh, I know reluctantly uh, with our as our director of facilities Tim has accepted a job uh, in the Mayapak Central School District uh, and I think we're all um, uh, sorry to see Tim go but would acknowledge that he has uh, done a lot for our school community in his three years of service here uh, he will be missed uh, and um, I know we'll express that appreciation to him directly uh, as we see him over these next few weeks. Tim's scheduled last day with us is the uh, last day before Thanksgiving break, so uh, just so that you're aware. And uh, we've begun the search for the next director of facilities. It's a civil service position, so there's a state list that we've already begun to canvas. And uh, Mr. Elder is overseeing the initial stages of that process, and I look forward to sharing more with you as that uh, process develops. And what's the sort of ideal timeline on? Yeah, so it's it's probably unrealistic to think that we're going to have somebody sitting in the position on the other end of Thanksgiving break. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, if you mid December would be best case scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, figure we have to give ourselves two weeks to canvas the list just for folks to get back to us, create a pool of candidates, go through a review process, mm -hmm. which we tend to have a couple of layers to as part of our process. That's going to take us to. Uh, right up to Thanksgiving. If that happens quickly, right. an individual may be in a sitting position where they have to give notice. Uh, so that brings us now into December. Right. Uh, so best case scenario, mid-December. Uh, that's if everything's moving very quickly. And uh, that being said, we're being mindful of that and, and not uh, for there not to be too much of a lapse and just seeing what other options we yeah. may have in consideration of that. And those, the, his responsibilities have been distributed, you know, amongst not, not yet. Uh, we're working with Tim just to outline key projects, uh, key issues within the department, key areas of responsibility. Uh, Josh and Tim are working on that right now. I will say this is where it's really helpful to have a, a director of human resources <laughs> uh, to go through all of those things. And then we're sitting together next week just to go through all of those and discuss how those responsibilities will be attended to uh, in the uh, event that we do have a lapse uh, in leadership in the department. Great. Among other things, it'd be great to have someone in place before the first snow day. It's always, <laughs> no if kidding. nothing else. <laughs> I, don't, I hate to see you down here with a shovel like I've yeah. often seen Tim on a Saturday morning. So. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? All right. Moving on to unfinished business. Um, our primary focus of concern this evening is the NISBA Area 10 Director election. You may have seen there are there were two resumes included in the agenda, and um, I don't have a personal relationship either with um, Cheryl Brady of White Plains or Deborah. Uh, forgive me if I pronounce her name incorrectly. Gotti of uh, North 
Rockland. I did a little bit of due diligence and spoke with some fellow board members in, lo in sort of our local districts. And um, I think they unanimously felt that Cheryl Brady of White Plains was a good candidate for us. She happens to be the liaison to Putnam North BOCES uh, from Southern Westchester for what that's worth. Um, and in my review of, they're both the two really quite capable and committed candidates, it seems to me, in one way or another. And uh, really, the only way I could weight one over the other was just their sort of proximity to us and whether or not, selfishly, it might be a little more serving for us to have that person in, in place. I don't know if anybody else reviewed those or had uh, any particular opinion about that. I, I did, re I did re re review their statements and sort of looked to see what I could find, which actually wasn't a lot from when they had run, yeah. um, and didn't have a strong opinion either way, but Sean doesn't. So there's a part of me that sort of, it sounds like an option is to not vote, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't have a strong opinion, um, at least in one of the messages that we got recently from one of the candidates, she mentioned that actually a lot of, you know, it's not required, I guess, mm -hmm. that we vote. But, um, but the idea of having, you know, of having someone, uh, you know, again, the, the proximity makes sense. But again, yeah. I don't, I actually don't have strong opinions either way. Mm -hmm. Although it sounds like you've, you've spoke to some people that you Yeah, some know. folks that yeah. I trust that felt yeah. like that was, you a know, good would be choice. a wise way to move forward okay. if we chose to vote, so. Um, I don't. Does, any, does everyone feel comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Comfortable yeah. With that? Great. All right. So, it's my understanding that Megan, that you will take care of submitting all the necessary paper. Although included in here was a survey. Is that, is that was that survey the? That that's the ballot that I will. Submit. That's the ballot that you're going to fill yes. out to submit. I wasn't sure. It seemed like a Google form, so I was yes. like, hmm, this doesn't seem very <laughs> official. So, but I'm glad to hear it is. All right. Um, so Cheryl. Yes. Okay. Correct. Cheryl Brady of White Plains. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby cast their vote for Cheryl Brady to the New York State School Boards Association Board of Directors representing Area 10 for the term January 1, 2023 through December 31, 2024, and authorizes the district clerk to execute any documents consistent with this motion. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Great. All right, moving on to new business, uh, CSE, CPSE recommendations, Ms. Shields. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendation of the Committee on Preschool Special Education and Committee on Special Education as presented below. All right. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. No? All right. Great. And then moving on to new to policy review, first readings and adoptions. Um, I don't know if we want to discuss anything. Do you have anything that you want to bring in to the conversation, Peggy or Megan? Do we need to have a motion first right. before we first, have the discussion? Yeah. yeah. May I have a motion, please? Recommended action motion yeah, right. discussion. Oh, I didn't. Oh, Go. I didn't see the recommended action. Be <laughs> it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board of education hereby waives the second readings and adopts the following Haldane Central School District policies as attached: 6140, 6150, 6160, 6213, 6220, and 7131. Okay. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Now we have a conversation. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Discussion. There we go. Um, I think these, you know, these, it's part of the audit. So these policies, I think they were not, you know, major rewrites. Um, I think the one thing, I mean, if people had any questions about sort of why some of the changes were um, made, I could, I could let you all know that. Um, actually, I think one thing that's actually kind of interesting is two of the ch two of the changes, so 6160 and 6213, part of the changes in the language there is actually a shift in language from professional development to professional learning, and that's a change that was actually made across multiple policies in the, um, in the policy audit we got this, received this year, which I think really reflects the idea of what, and actually Ezra can probably speak to this more eloquently than I can, but just the idea of really recognizing the, the value of teachers um, 
uh, and the professionalism of teachers who are engaging in ongoing professional learning activities instead of professional development being this thing that sort of happens outside to teachers and really I think reflects a shift in the recognition about what really um, makes for a beneficial and productive learning experience for an adult professional. Did I capture that adequately? Yeah, that's, yeah. A, good, that's a good step. <laughs> <I would argue. laughs> Um, you know, obviously, a uh, classroom is an active space. Uh, learning is an active space. Um, and I, I think the idea of uh, policies to at least try to handle that are really important. So, yeah. that's quite a few of them. Um, but yeah, that was, I mean, if you look, because there's a, the track changes version mm -hmm. and, then, and then the clean versions, I mean, you can see the changes are not, <coughs> are not extensive and, again, just part of our ongoing um, policy audit process. I have a couple of just random questions. Most of them are non-related to or policy adjacent, but a good time to ask. One. First question mm -hmm. on the 6150, which is for everyone following along at home: alcohol, tobacco, drugs, and other substances. Parentheses staff. Should we just take tobacco out of the title because the policy actually doesn't address tobacco at all? It's in a different policy that we don't mm -hmm. that is referred to. So it's theoretically not possibly something we can do. The one thing that we've learned in the process of conducting the <laughs> okay, policy no audit is that oftentimes if you look at the end of a policy, you'll see it's referencing multiple yes. laws and and, and there may be a real rationale right. for doing that. Although that's actually a really interesting policy to really, just to, to, to keep in mind what really motivated the change in that policy more is the fact that New York State has legalized the use of cannabis, right? right? Yeah. And so now cannabis is being pulled out from a use, from as being referred to as like a recreational drug, right? I mean, it it is, but I mean, it's now got its it's 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 t really got a different status now in right. New York mm -hmm. State because it's not an Ill, it's not illegal anymore. So that's interesting because in the policy, it's, uh, I don't see any changes to the cannabis piece. It Am says I? cannabis or any other controlled mm -hmm. substance. Is it is in schedules one through four or five, mm -hmm. the controlled substance? Yeah. Is it maybe that, is that a federal act? I don't know. It's no but it doesn't seem that the language one, has actually changed that. about cannabis, which may, may or may I, not be I correct. Thought that it ha I thought <clears throat> that it had pulled it out. So the one thing I don't know... No, if you can so see right. in that track changes version is is possibly it added it under it B. added it right it's B so what you can't see in this printed version is that that's a track change and that's an oh, addition it's a different color yeah so it's it's so you can right. see the strikes really clearly in a black and white printout right. you can't see that tracked additions as well in a black and white printout because they're in a color no 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 it's right, cool. that's that's, that's did, what we're here for. <laughs> so this is my adjacent question. It uh, cannabis, great um, tobacco, alcohol, all legal substances. Are there law and there? There's. I noticed there was a, struck out in accordance with law of regulation district policy. Smoking and vaping are prohibited on school grounds. It's legal. It's prohibited on school grounds. Are there laws that cover the consumption of alcohol, to, alcohol, tobacco, or cannabis that are not policy that are legal like out of school you can't drink alcohol yeah. i don't know if there's a law that states that it, it you, you can't by matter of policy in our yeah. code of conduct right um i i wouldn't go as, probably zones? right uh, yeah just yeah. off the top of my head i can't aside from maybe something related to drug-free school zones i that's a good point ezra I, I can't think of a law no. off the top of my head for you. Um, well, the law would also be that that they're not of age, so that would right. be a law. Well, yeah. yeah. No, you. Staff. Yeah. Staff, yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Yep. Usually, we can't hours. open up a what? Hanging out after hours on the Hang, playground. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. With right. the forty. Yeah. <laughs> With your forty? Oh my goodness. No. Um, not mine. <laughs> All right, so oh, I, I will, I will keep you, that please. short and sweet. Um, thank the, you. The, oh, my only other question was oh. on professional growth staff development. Uh, I noticed that the mentoring program was a requirement, must, and is no longer. Could somebody talk about? It says will include. So, uh, professional le learning plan will include a provision for a mentoring program mm -hmm. as opposed to first-year teachers must participate. That's a little bit different. It is mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah. 
Is that a yeah, definition? so... Mm. And I'm the guy who forgot his laptop in his office when I walked <laughs> over here, so I'm not referring directly to the language. But our we operate under the mentoring program as a requirement. Okay. It's a requirement for our students, okay. or I'm sorry, for our teachers to yeah. to engage in the mentoring program in their first year. Is college. that is that also in the contract too? Do you, do you have a mentor and right. mentor, mentee in the contract the, anyway? There's so a component have, of the contract. So that you would have doubled up it. language anyway. Yeah. All right, in cool. the, that was going to be my follow-up question. Is I know that there were certain amendments made last year in the contract negotiation process to professional development, and I'm curious to know if are those amend are those included in the policy, or is that something that just exists? In that the, just exists in the contract. Great. It's not reflected yeah. in the policy. Okay. Cool. That's it. Thank you. Okay. No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Great. Moving on to our second communication from the public. Um, I have read in the paragraph. No one is here. So moving on to board reflections. Um, I have a reflection. I don't know if anybody else does. But we, we received a, um, an email from a, a member of the community who said, I often listen as opposed to watch um, via YouTube our meetings. And she, she brought it up as a you know, possible sort of accessibility issue that it might be useful for us, low impact, to introduce ourselves and provide some sort of visual description of any sort of materials we're bringing in for those that might, you know, have be sight impaired in one way or another or those that are listening that way. And it seemed like a relatively um, easy lift for us to do in one way or another. I don't know if it's something that we need to be formalized so much as a reminder of, you know, please introduce yourself by name so folks know who it is that's speaking at any given time. I mean, I know there are some sort of you, I have attended meetings where there's considerable self-description of what you look like and what you're wearing, and I don't know that we need to necessarily go down that path. But I uh, thought it was I, in reference mainly to people coming in, doing any type of presentation at any right. given moment, just at the beginning of their presentation to right. suggest, you know, like when Kent came in, you Correct. know, I'm Kent, who, I'm he is Kent, who yeah, I am. It's real right? simple, or but when it's Phil true has to give up when Phil has to get up and discuss something. Yeah, about, I believe that's pretty minor. Yeah, yeah. Right. I yeah. Think we can yeah. do that. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, and and I I and I think that was a meeting that I led, and it was a workshop meeting, and so we had a lot of presentations, and I was aware of the fact that because we were in the room, and you know, I I know who comes and what order they come in, and I have the agenda in front of me. That you know, I wasn't introducing those people by name and we weren't asking them to introduce themselves right. by name but it certainly seemed like at a very minimum when we do any like I think any presentation but I think especially um, at, a, at a workshop meeting where we're having the reports from the administrators and folks like just having folks introduce themselves um, yeah. and, and say who the role is a really good idea yeah. I mean not everybody has been here forever and knows exactly. that Mrs. Selke is the you know, middle school, Dr. Selke is the middle school principal, you know, so, yeah. Great. Okay. That's my, that's a proposal. And I actually have two. Great. So, um, <coughs> one is, and I could have done it, I guess actually just guess I could have done it by email, but in the next round of policies that we review, there are two policies that have been completely rewritten, mm -hmm. and those I actually think we want to do two readings of, right? Okay. Because I think one of the things, and it's actually really great that folks are, it's good for all of us to be reading these policies and really think about them and their implications, but those are two policies that, there's two policies that we got, again, that are just written completely from scratch because there were so many changes that they made. So I actually think we want to do two readings of those and the other ones may be a single reading, so that was one of comment. The other thing is, and I actually meant to do it before tonight, I just want to give everyone a heads up that we're moving into superintendent evaluation season, um, and so <laughs> which is part of budget season as well. I mean, it's a lot starts to happen in November and December, um, uh, and um, I'll be bringing, um, just to just let people keep in mind sort of you know what the schedule will be, we'll do a, a mid-year evaluation um, with Phil before the end of the calendar year, and that'll require, I'll write this up and share it with folks, um, uh, an executive session once just ourselves and then a meeting with Phil. So just keep in mind, we'll have executive sessions in both of our December meetings. Um, and then when we were looking at um, 
as we were discussing it, we actually, I think we're going to move a little bit earlier, the superintendent, the fi- the end of year superintendent oh, evaluation process. I think, um, I yeah, we're going to just move it earlier. So that's all. Great. But just a heads up about that in the works. Thank you. Two things. One, I got to attend the 9-10 student night. It's not really curriculum night. It's like what you wish kids you knew before they got to That's a a useful night. It was a very useful night. I think they did it virtually last year. I didn't go. I didn't attend either virtually or certainly in person. And it was fantastic. It was, I commend all the department chairs. It was a really great learning experience. You really get a sense for, especially how the different verticals are very different in terms of their approach and uh, course selection, all that sort of stuff. So I commend all the uh, the teachers who were there. I would also just say, having gone to a number of athletic games this fall, <laughs> I would commend all the teachers who come out to watch. We were down at um, NIAC and Miss Martinos was there. I was like, this is fantastic. You're taking time out of your own personal schedule. And I noticed that repeatedly at football games and a number of, it's just a great, mark of people coming out to support the students that they have and the students that they know and I thought it was lovely so thank you to everybody who does that all right great then uh Dr. Benante final thoughts no all right then let's I make a uh uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn second all right any discussion no all right all those in favor Aye. 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 aye aye any opposed no great thank you everyone